Bitch, let me tell you something. Hey, what's up, you guys? I know it's been a minute. I know it's been a minute. I know it's been a minute. I'll talk about that in another video. I am here to talk about the infamous pink sauce. I've seen it. I saw it a couple weeks ago. It was on my Instagram feed. They kept pushing this damn video to me on my Instagram. And I was just sitting here like... Okay, it's just a light-skinned girl sitting up here eating this pink sauce. Apparently, she is a chef. If she's been a chef for celebrities and high-profile people. And she decided to make a sauce and sell it. I'm like, okay, I see you, sis. Not gonna dog pal on this girl, but I am gonna keep it real. And I'm not gonna be soft about it. Y'all know how I am. We're gonna have a conversation. I'm gonna go on her website. One thing that I noticed is that her website, and this is the thing, let me just go ahead and start. Let me go ahead and start off with my first opinion. My first opinion is y'all allow desirable people to get away with anything. You guys automatically give your trust, your money, your time to somebody just because of the way that they look. Cause I'm gonna be honest. I do believe that she's worked hard. It's a black woman. She's a chef. She probably is a great chef. I don't know that. I'm giving her that as a benefit of the doubt. But the further you are from societal desire, the more you have to work in order to get half this far. And for her, she's a black woman, so of course she's probably had to work a lot to get half this far. But the thing is, y'all will not let anybody else get away with this lackluster of a rollout that you call a business. And this is no tea, no shade. I actually hope that she sees this video because I'm trying to keep it real in a way that is gentle and I have grace. But here's the thing that I'm gonna say. Black owned businesses generally have a tough time getting manufacturing, licensing, margins they always have to pay more and then they always wind up having to charge more they have a hard time getting distribution customer acquisition they have a tough time marketing they have a tough time getting their stuff to be marketed on youtube black businesses have a tough time trying to break the glass ceiling so of course things are going to be higher they're going to cost more Every time you're supporting a small business, but more specifically a black owned business, there are always gonna be challenges in that business that would not happen if they were Asian, Hispanic, or just plain up Caucasian. Starting a business, no matter what color you are, is tough. And you don't have access to the same things that the big Fortune 500 competitors have. So I understand, and that's where I'm gonna give her some grace. And I don't see a lot of people doing that. I see a few people on TikTok doing that, but I'm gonna give her grace for a lot of different stuff that I'm going to mention. But here's the problem. I believe the term black owned business is turning from a, it's becoming less of a badge of honor, less of a statement, more than it is becoming a crutch. And here's what I mean, especially with you hairstylists, nail techs, and makeup artists, but I'm not even gonna go there today. I think that a lot of black owned businesses are using the fact that we already know what challenges come with that as a crutch to have very piss poor things that you can actually control. The amount of controllable variables that you have when you are running a business are already slim to none. But what you can control, the aesthetic, your rollout, most of your marketing, like there are certain things that you can just do. And I, I feel like a lot of times, especially in this day and age, when we have the resources that our ancestors did not have, we need to be able to use them. That means if you need to use somebody off of Fiverr, if you need to learn something off of Skillshare, if you need to learn something off of YouTube University, if you need to ask questions, if you need to get some somebody to help you second and third opinions if you need to do a soft launch if you need to give out free product and get some feedback then that's what you need to do you do not 
start a business just because you can. Just because you can wholesale some shit, concoct some shit in your kitchen, and put it in a box and ship it does not mean you should start a business. Let me say that again. Just because you can wholesale some shit, concoct some shit in your kitchen, put it in a box and ship it and put a price tag on it, does not mean you should start a business. Let me start off with saying for this particular pink sauce. The website is very lackluster. And I feel as if you can have control over, this is something you could have easily fixed. The wait is finally over. I'm looking at it on my computer. These margins are off. <sighs> it's just not a good looking website. Not an attractive looking website. Your logo is, <sighs> This website looks like a 12 year old did it on Wix. And this is the thing, even with the things that I'm gonna say about the sauce in and of itself, these are things that are very easy to fix. And if you are not able to easily do these things and you've been launching this sauce for a long time, people had to pre-order this sauce and they're still waiting on it. And you launched the first few in, a, in plastic bags. The pink sauce canceled. Y'all waited this long for nothing. This is no, no, ma'am. We're not trying this. Look at this. It stinks like throw up. No, no, not gonna work. Sorry. I'm not touching this shit. This is no. I saved my chicken nuggets just for this shit. <laughs> now I gotta put my shit in the air fryer to heat them back up and I could have ate them when that shit was hot. <laughs> no, ma'am. No. No. Look at this. I'm holding my breath like a motherfucker. Oh my God, look, look at this. It don't even say pink sauce on this bitch. Oh my, it's gone. There's nothing else in here. Like it's, it's gone. Oh my God. It's, I, I, mm -mm. You're done. Wind it up. Uh-uh. I can't even, I can't even stop the video. Please come, uh-uh. Turn this off. Pink sauce is canceled. <laughs> I'm about to throw up. Turn the video off. It's it no. It's a no for me. For one, it's stink. Okay. Sweeting. I had gloves on, but we're still putting hand sanitizer on. Um, it's stank. Sorry, y'all. That nope. I am trying my best to be very gentle with you, but you launched the first few in a plastic bag. You launched a bottle of sauce in a bag to people, and you didn't think none of them was gonna bust. FYI, people that work in packaging and shipping and postal service are rough with shit, so you need to pack it in a way where it don't bust. And then you have the nutritional facts. You say it's a tablespoon per serving. A tablespoon is 14.4 grams, but it's 444 serving per container. 444 tablespoons is about 1.75 gallons. Simple shit like this is something you could have done. Each serving is 90 calories, one gram of fat, 60 grams of sodium, four grams of fiber, 11 grams of sugar. Who is the person, what, what, what nutrition organization did this for you? Because you cannot just determine these stats, fat, 
sugar, sodium on your own. You need to get that done by a federally regulated nutritional organization. Because if you if it's if you already got it saying 444 servings per container, I'm almost for certain that nothing else on this label is accurate. And when you are doing food, when you are stepping into a new market, you cannot just concoct shit and sell it. To even disprove the accuracy of this nutritional facts label, she said each serving has one gram of fat. Looking here on the pink sauce, it says it has sunflower seed oil. And here you are using damn near an entire bottle of sunflower seed oil. So the base of it has to be sunflower seed oil. And each tablespoon of sunflower seed oil is approximately 14 grams of fat and one gram of trans fat. And 119 calories. Plus whole milk has about a half a gram of fat and one third a gram of saturated fat per tablespoon. And the number would be around a quarter of a gram of fat if it's 2% milk. So this whole nutritional facts label is just grossly inaccurate. And it's unethical to give an inaccurate nutritional fact label. Breaking news, she just dropped this video on TikTok about her nutrition label. All right, y'all, time to acknowledge the elephant in the room. So I wanna start off by saying, number one, my apologies. My apologies, my apologies. I'm only human, I'm not perfect. Another thing, we have a team, things happen. The grams got mixed up with the serving size. There's 444 grams of pink sauce inside of each container. It's about 30 servings per container. It was a mistake. We fixed the issue. You guys will not be receiving pink sauce bottles with the bad label. We are replacing all of the labels. We also are sending you guys a gift and a thank you note. And this is a small business, y'all. This is a small business that is just moving really, really fast. We are working to try to get the price mark down on the pink sauce. I want to also say I appreciate y'all for supporting me, for spending $20 per sauce to help us to produce it because the ingredients are not cheap. Um, yes, we are following FDA standard. However, we are currently in lab testing. We are in lab testing um, currently. So once we go through lab testing, we will be able to pitch to stores to put the pink sauce in stores. And we're so excited about that. Um, but yeah, we're growing every day. I'm listening to y'all. I see y'all. Um, I do. I am a heart. I'm a passionate person, but yeah, I'm listening to y'all. I hear y'all and we're growing every single. Here's my issue with this video. You're getting everything FDA approved for this and this. That's something you do before you sell any in, in any medium, any item that you are expecting people to consume. You do not wait until you get dragged. You do not wait until it's on a shelf at a store. You make sure you handle that regulation, that nutritional, that health business before you drop a product. You make sure all of this business is handled. This very simple, very easy business is handled before you drop a food product. And if it's not easy and simple, then I'm sorry. You're not ready to launch until you get it done. It costs a lot of money, takes a lot of time. You have to ship it here and get it. It's a whole lot of stuff that goes into making food products that take up a lot of time and it's time consuming. And if you're not willing to sacrifice that time, potentially sacrifice not being able to drop it when you want to drop it then you are not up to making a product that people should be consuming on a large scale period because no 
federally regulated company would allow you to have this lackluster of quality control and this grossly inaccurate nutritional facts. It's going to take time. When Brianna was doing Fenty, she had been working on that brand for 10 years. And I feel like nowadays, people feel like just because you can buy a domain off of GoDaddy and you can buy some shit off wholesale on AliExpress or Alibaba and put a label on it, and just because you can mix it up in your kitchen and put it in a jar and put a label on it, that you should sell it. And that's not true. It takes a long time, a lot of brain power, a lot of money, a lot of soft launches, a lot of... Uh, pseudo launches before you are able to sell a product and then you have the product selling for $20 and not only that you have people buying a bottle with the label not snug on the back of the bottle do y'all see how the corners are not flush to the curvature of the bottle and you selling it in you sold the first batch in pouches and I'm almost for certain that shipping was extremely cheap well, not extremely cheap, but it was way cheaper than boxes. So you are cutting every corner except for those on your label to sell people a $20 bottle of sauce. How much are you paying per bottle to make the sauce? Because if it's, it, it can't be anywhere near the 20. So I'm adding the sauce to the cart. The ingredients are some vinegar is spelled incorrectly. It says vinegar. You don't have any expiration date on the sauce. And you can buy milk-based products off the shelf. I, people, ranch is on the shelf, mayonnaise is on the shelf. However, you need to put the expiration date on your bottles. Date. You need to put expiration dates on your bottles. And it does not say to refrigerate after opening. So do you know what that means? That means you open yourself up to somebody to sue you if they get sick. And the one thing that scares me the most about these not coming with expiration dates is that is the indication to the consumer about how long this product has been made and shipped and in production. We don't know how long this could have been sitting in her car, at her house, because it doesn't have an expiration or a sell-by date. And also, it's not bad to buy milk-based products off the counter. However, here's the issue. When you go to Walmart, nine times out of 10 Hidden Valley Ranch or Mayo or whatever is shipped in temperature controlled environments and they are shipped very fast because of the high demand and the high volume that is being purchased and it's being ordered and whole sold. So yes, you buy Hidden Valley Ranch. However, there's always an indication on the bottle i.e. an expiration date to tell you how long it has been since the manufacturer made it and what is recommended to sell by the sell by date so you can get the freshest materials and it is walmart kroger hcb's job to make sure that they are keeping the expired food off of the shelves so if the sell date sell by date is a month beforehand they're pulling it off and putting it on clearance or they're just putting it off and sending it back or pulling it off the shelves and discarding it for safety so she could have made this sauce two years ago last month whenever she wanted to make the sauce because we don't have any indication in the label as to what is the best sell by date also we know for a fact because of the bag situation that she's not sending these in a temperature control way. She could have shipped these last month and they being shipped hot right alongside Shein shoes and Amazon hair curdlers. And I'm really trying to help you because I want to see you win. However, I feel like you just have not done any due diligence with this. You haven't done any due diligence. To get it shipped to me, I got to pay $10, $9.12 to get it shipped to Houston. So $30 for one bottle of Pink Ranch. You got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. And the way that you've advertised it, I'll, if you want to see what it tastes like, buy it, buy it, buy it. Honestly, it has its own taste. If you want to taste it, buy it. It goes on sale. Which is great because you've sold a few of them. 
But I just feel like you just slapped this business together just because you knew that you could. Which is trash. Because as much as I hate a whole bunch of multi-billion dollar corporations, they still have a code of ethics they have to follow when they make shit. They gotta, they have a code of ethics. They can't just launch a new flavor of sauce. They can't just launch a new spicy mayo without having to go through testing and making sure it doesn't get anybody sick and quality control. You cannot be good quality control. I am so sorry. That is a conflict of fucking interest. And my issue is that you just did it because you could. And the reason why I'm coming at you hard is because white businesses, capitalist business, they're not the fucking standard. We are. We're the standard. And I'm holding you accountable because I know it's mostly black women, black people, black folk eating the shit. And you have the nerve to make an insinuation that the only reason why people are coming at you is because you're a black woman. No, the people are coming at you because you made a potentially hazardous food product. People should be able to hold accountable anybody who is not giving safe, decent, functional products. No matter what color you are, you could be blue, black, purple, yellow, green, brown. Yes, are people going to probably be harsher with you? Yes, but you knew that before you decided to make Pepto Ranch. And I will. I'm going to just leave that right there for y'all. Girl, shut the fuck up. You thought you ate that? <laughs> you don't got, you don't have the right just because you are a black owned business and you have challenges to be this lackluster with your product. I promise y'all, nobody is gunning after or hating on black businesses. These black business owners are getting into business and doing everything wrong. And then we're just supposed to support it and not say anything about their bad business practices there are so many black women on this app selling food out of their home that they should not be fucking selling they're not shipping with refrigerated shipping they're giving you dry ice that doesn't even last a day and then y'all be the same ones like oh you can't eat at everybody house but then ordering food from across the country in our community yes do we buy plates out of people's houses Yes, but they're usually down the street and they usually make the food that day. Buying unregulated food out of people's house is asinine. It's not a it's not a black business problem. It's not a black woman problem. It's just bad business. And that shit like this, haphazard shit like this, is what gives other black owned businesses, especially in this food space, a tough time. Because people are using the weakest link as the barometer. And it really pisses me off because you got people paying $30 for a bottle this size. This is a 20 ounce bottle of sauce. I spent a dollar on this ketchup. Now I don't expect for your sauce to be a dollar, but $20 a bottle is a lot. And I know your cost of, of goods is probably high, but it's not that high for you to be selling bottles of pink ranch for 20 fucking dollars plus nine dollar shipping and i also wanted to note i saw a lot of people in the comments saying that they that each time they've seen the pink sauce anywhere it's been completely different shades of pink so these are just some pictures off of the internet to show you the different shades of pink and this is a light pink that she used in this video where i believe this is chicken nuggets and then she did another video with chicken tenders and ramen noodles and this is like more of a purple almost and this is the issue when you do not have quality control when you just mix and shit in your kitchen now you could sell this outro trunk but selling this as a national e-commerce product is just not the move you do with this this pink sauce has looked completely different colors in almost every single picture and video i've seen on the internet and that type of quality control is when you need a reputable manufacturer to do but also she needs to talk to the fda before she's selling sauce and then this is the excuse that you use the color didn't change just the lighting 
We need to talk about pink sauce and why a lot of people are concerned for the people that have bought this sauce from the lady that makes it on TikTok. Because the hue of the sauce keeps changing. Every photo, every video, the sauce color looks different. And also she doesn't describe what it actually tastes like. I don't know if it is to promote it, get people to buy it, just to see what it tastes like, but she will not describe the taste. She says it's because she cannot describe the taste. I've been hearing it kind of tastes like ranch, not exactly ranch, but basically ranch. Now now that people have purchased it and received it, they're noticing that there's a lot of stuff that's really sketchy with the bottle. The nutrition facts seem to be off. It says there's 444 servings. Some of the ingredients are spelled wrong. The website also just seems so poorly put together. Like, what is this? Why does it say this? It's literally like $20 for a bottle and a lot of people are now worried that this creator is going to be facing lawsuits. The sauce was also arriving in the mail in these bags. They were not like boxed up with bubble wrap and we're talking about liquid sauce here. So obviously some people were receiving them literally exploded. It's honestly so sad. I'm really rooting for small businesses, but when it comes to food, you need to be careful with what you're buying and the safety and everything. With this website, you didn't spend no money on trying to hire somebody to make this website look decent, to get this website looking nice and decent. You didn't do any of that. This whole time where you eating this sauce on Instagram and doing the, all of the clout chasing shit, that should have been the same time that you spent into trying to figure out how to get this website looking better than this. Go to my website, DejaDiva.com. I spent so long on that website and I am updating my website weekly weekly even when I'm inconsistent posting on YouTube or my podcast or whatever I'm still updating my website I got second third fourth fifth sixth opinions about my website I spent a lot of time and money trying to get my website right I spent a lot of time and money trying to get this space right and even though this isn't the best of space I am spending way more time, money, and effort in just getting shit on a foundation alone. I spend more time on that than you spend on this sauce. And I'm keeping it real with you because you could, and, and I'm not even going to get to the nutritional shit because I'm not a, I'm not a tr uh, chemist or whatever, but it's a whole bunch of people who are in this food space that are really doing their research and their due diligence and seeing that, like, the fact of the matter that you got a label that is entirely too big for the back that you couldn't even take some scissors and cut off, those simple things move mountains when it comes down to a business. You couldn't hire nobody to package your stuff. You couldn't hire nobody to help you. You cannot, you cannot cut corners when you're starting a business. Once you have a lot more money, maybe then your cost of goods will lower because you are shipping it out at a more exponential rate. However, at this point of the stage, the most expensive stage of becoming, of doing a business or selling a product is going to be in development. And I'm sorry, it's going to take time. It's going to take money. It's going to take failure. But I don't like the fuck it mentality, the Jaclyn Hill mentality, or I'ma just drop the lipsticks. And so what if people cut their lips on it? So what if I don't have quality control? So what if I'm ignoring this shit or not paying enough money for this shit or doing enough time for this shit? So what? Fuck them. Because whenever I get my business to where it needs to be, that type of shit don't work with black women. You fuck up one time in a business space and that's almost like an ax to your fo your whole shit. So I really do, I, 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 I'm having grace with you, but it just seems as if you just did this shit off the whim. This is an awesome concept. Pink sauce is pink. You got these natural ingredients you say you have in them and all this other shit. But now it's time to do the dirty, I don't feel like doing it, paperworky ass work to get the business eligible to be even sold to people. People, and, and I get it, the education is lacking, but it is your job to use the resources in front of you to ask for help to get shit done. And yes, asking for help, a lot of people might want to help you for free because you already have a, a huge following. But you're going to have to pay, and it costs money. You, Most people who start businesses are in debt the entire first two or three years. Most people do not see profit or money in the bank or are able to begin to pay themselves three or four years into it. 
There ain't no shortcut to this shit. And with the resources that our generation has, the internet, YouTube, Fiverr, Skillshare, we are even, it's less headache, still headache, but it's that's an ibuprofen for it. So I'm, I'm extremely disappointed because I, I don't want nobody to get sick. I, and I just feel like you just, you, you took no time. Nobody revised or edited this website. And you, I just, especially because we already have so much working against us, we have to do better. And if you can't do better, the thing is, if you make, somebody said this one time, I saw this on Shark Tank. She said, when you make enough money, hire your weaknesses. Materials, shipping and returns, dimensions, care instructions, all of those tabs are empty. And people are just buying it off the strength of you being an influencer or a micro influencer. And I don't, I think you've greatly taken advantage of your following. I've never followed you before, but I thought that this looked interesting. And I was actually kind of interested in buying a bottle until I took the time to look on your fucking website and see that you don't give a fuck. And if you do give a fuck, then you need to be aware that this is what it's given. Cause this ain't it. And I hate that I had to jump on you for 20 minutes, but I, I just, I really, really, really want you to get this right. Because I believe that this has the potential to be winding up on my shelf in the grocery store. But you have to get this, this simple stuff right. Because I know if you don't have the simple things done, I already know that you don't have the shit that really matters, which is in the bottle. And I don't think it's right for you to do your followers like that. I'm sorry. And people are calling you out all over TikTok and Twitter. People are calling you out, as they should. And if you care about being a business owner, don't say it was the haters. It's the haters. It's not haters. It's people who truly are invested in your shit being higher quality. Now, some people gonna hate. But I, if, if you... I, let me tell you how I know you didn't do a soft lunch. Because everybody that I know that bought it and just got their package, they are all saying the same things. It's watery. It's loose. It's watery. It's watery. It's watery. Oh, shit. God damn. This shit. Oh, y'all. This shit watery as fuck. Okay. I really hate how runny it is. Okay. It's going everywhere. It's very watery. I will say that. This is how liquidy it is. Hold on. And if you had did a soft launch, if you had did a test, PR, people would have been able to tell you the consistency ain't it. And you would have been able to rectify that. And I wouldn't be mad if this was an eyeshadow, a lip gloss. I wouldn't be mad if this was even a body wash. This is something that people are putting in their bodies. Girl, y'all tell me what y'all think in the comments. I just had to do a video about it. I'm about to be rolling out with the diva discussions. <sighs> Tell me what y'all feel. All right. Bye, divas. <laughs> yeah. It's Diva.